Yellowstone is renowned for its stunning national park that boasts an array of captivating attractions, attracting a large number of tourists from around the globe. However, visitors should exercise caution as a massive fissure, measuring 100 feet in width, has suddenly appeared in less than a day. The cause of this crevice and its implications for the national park and its environs are currently unknown. Yellowstone National Park is a globally popular tourist destination, offering attractions for everyone. The Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, carved by the Yellowstone River, is a breathtaking sight, stretching 20 miles in length and 1,200 feet deep. The lower falls of the river are also awe-inspiring, as the water cascades 308 feet down, twice the height of Niagara Falls, before hitting the canyon floor with such force that it sends foam and mist hundreds of feet upward, constantly dampening the surrounding rock. The bright green moss growing high above the water is the most famous and frequently photographed feature of the area. The river appears green as it races along, but it's entirely clear. The river's color is due to the presence of algae and moss. The Mammoth Hot Spring, created by heat, water, minerals, and limestone, is another famous feature of Yellowstone. The hot water springs dissolve variously colored travertine, a type of calcium carbonate, from the limestone underground and carries it to the surface through rising springs. While some springs and terraces may die, the total flow of water within Yellowstone remains surprisingly constant as new flows emerge at the surface. One of the most remarkable features in Yellowstone is Minerva Terrace, which resembles a finely carved staircase. The mud volcano area of Yellowstone is another attraction that visitors can experience with their sense of smell even before seeing it. The sulfuric odor is responsible for the mud's hissing and gurgling sounds. The sulfuric acid from the pots eats away at the surrounding landscape, creating an eerie yet captivating atmosphere. The Upper Geyser Basin is another popular area within the National Park, hosting the most geothermal features in the park, including the renowned Old Faithful Geyser. This region is the ideal spot to witness geyser eruptions. The park can predict the eruptions of five major geysers in the Upper Geyser Basin. All of these features have something in common, as they are all manifestations of something hot and fiery that you don't want to encounter, a volcano. Yellowstone is famous for its connection with volcanoes, and the effects of the volcano can be seen throughout the park in numerous ways. However, a new frightening development is taking place in Yellowstone. Within just 24 hours, a vast 100-foot-wide crack appeared in the park, prompting park authorities to close off a large section for urgent investigations. They needed to determine what was causing this phenomenon and what it meant for the area's topography. The crack was discovered in the Teton area of the Wyoming section of Yellowstone Park, an area familiar with volcanoes. The rugged grandeur of the Tetons is the result of four geologic factors – tough, hard rocks in the core, vertical uplift, the mountain's age, and the dynamic forces of destruction. Many other mountains in Wyoming have equally hard rocks in their cores and vertical uplift, but they rose 50 to 60 million years ago and have since been eroded. The Tetons are Wyoming's youngest range, dating back less than 10 million years, and thus have not been as deeply eroded. Any steep slope or cliff is particularly vulnerable to nature's destructive forces. The Tetons represent a never-ending struggle between two opposing forces. The first is the rock's extreme toughness and, as a result, their resistance to erosion. The second is the presence of efficient transportation agencies that move all rock debris away from the mountains and lower slopes. The rocks in the Teton range are some of the hardest and most durable which makes them resistant to mechanical disintegration caused by natural forces like temperature changes, ice, and water. These rocks are composed of minerals that do not undergo much chemical decay in the cold climate of the Tetons, and the absence of weak layers prevents the tough rock masses from collapsing under their own weight. However, despite their resilience, the rocks eventually yield to repeated volume changes, producing stress and strain that cause cracks to form. Water seeps into these cracks, freezes, and expands, eventually causing slabs of rock to break away from the mountain wall. This process, known as frost wedging, causes the slabs to tip and fall, sometimes rolling hundreds or thousands of feet and breaking into smaller fragments. These rock fragments make their way down to the valley floor or slope, 
where gravity moves them over significant distances. If the debris is mixed with snow or saturated with water, it may flow slowly like a glacier. Though the Tetons rocks are tough and resistant to erosion, they are not invincible and eventually succumb to natural forces, resulting in the constant degradation of the mountain range. To rephrase the script, the Teton range's hard, dense rocks are resistant to erosion, but they are not immune. Weathering, including the repeated freeze-thaw cycle, eventually causes the rocks to yield and form cracks, leading to rockfall and debris flow down the slopes. Snow avalanches and water are also effective agents for transporting rock debris down the mountainsides, leaving visible scars on the slopes. The recent discovery of a 100-foot-wide crack in Teton has caused concern, as geologists are closely monitoring for movement of the expanding cracks in the rock buttress. Yellowstone National Park is currently recharging as magma chambers fill with molten rock from the Earth's mantle, and scientists are working to determine how quickly magma is building up beneath the Yellowstone supervolcano. To put it simply, researchers from Washington State University have developed a new method to accurately measure the amount of magma that enters the Yellowstone supervolcano during the recharging process. While this method does not predict when the volcano will erupt, it provides scientists with valuable insights into how the volcano replenishes its magma store. Magma pools beneath the Earth's crust in subsurface chambers, and when these chambers are filled, the volcano could erupt at any time, whether it's in months or millennia. The explosive power of the eruption comes from the release of up to 240 cubic miles of magma into the atmosphere, composed of a volcanic rock called rhyolite that breaks through the Earth's crust during the eruption. In their study, Professor Larson and his colleagues focused on the plume of magma heating the rhyolite from below, which allowed them to estimate how much magma recharges the volcano each year. The researchers injected the safe and approved radioactive isotope deuterium into several hot springs in Yellowstone National Park, which provided them with the necessary data. The team analyzed the hydrothermal vents connected to their hot springs to understand the Yellowstone volcanic system. They calculated the amount of water and heat flowing out of the springs by measuring the temperature and the time it took for the deuterium to return to normal background radiation levels. Previous studies underestimated these values. This raises the question of whether a Yellowstone eruption can be prevented or if we are helpless. NASA proposes drilling up to six miles into the supervolcano and pumping in high-pressure water to cool it, which they consider the most viable solution. This mission would cost $3.46 billion but could be offset by building a geothermal power plant, which generates electricity at a competitive price of around 10 cents per kilowatt hour. The idea behind NASA's plan to prevent a Yellowstone eruption is to drill into the supervolcano and pump in high-pressure water to cool it down. However, this method poses a serious risk of backfiring and causing the very eruption that it aims to prevent. Drilling into the top of the magma chamber would be extremely risky, but it could be attempted from lower sites with caution. Furthermore, the plan would be a slow and time-consuming process, taking tens of thousands of years to complete and still no guarantee of success. In the event of a Yellowstone eruption, the consequences would be catastrophic, with ash spreading thousands of miles, damaging buildings, suffocating crops, and shutting down power plants. The supervolcano is fed by a massive plume of molten rock from deep beneath the Earth's surface, and the potential danger it poses is still a looming threat if NASA's plan fails. The heat from the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone National Park is responsible for many of the park's geysers and hot springs. The ground above the chamber rises and falls as the magma rises and cools. While most of the park's eruptions have been smaller lava flows, there is a remote possibility of a catastrophic super-eruption, which is defined as anything with a magnitude of 8 or higher on the Volcano Explosivity Index that ejects at least 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles of material. This would be thousands of times more powerful than even the most powerful eruptions we've seen in the past. Yellowstone has experienced three of these massive eruptions, the last of which occurred 664,000 years ago and created the Yellowstone Caldera, a 34-mile by 50-mile depression in the ground. The possibility of a super-eruption draws attention to Yellowstone, and if it were to happen, it could spew ash thousands of miles across the country, damaging buildings, suffocating crops, and shutting down power plants. 
It's important to note that Yellowstone is not the only supervolcano on Earth. Geologists have found evidence of at least 47 super eruptions in history, with the most recent occurring about 26,000 years ago in New Zealand's Taupo. The Toba eruption, which happened 74,000 years ago due to shifting tectonic plates, caused a 6 to 10 year long global winter, which some believe almost wiped out early humans. While super eruptions happen on average once every 100,000 years, it's possible that a smaller eruption could occur at Yellowstone, similar to the ongoing lava flows at Iceland's Barabunga, or even a typical volcanic explosion. In this scenario, a series of earthquakes in a specific area of the park would cause the magma to rise to the surface. However, in the unlikely event of a much larger super eruption, the warning signs would be more pronounced, such as intense seismic activity throughout the park, and those earthquakes could take weeks or months to break up the rocks above the magma. Imagine a volcanic eruption that is 1,000 times more powerful than a regular one, lasting for weeks or months and ejecting at least 240 cubic miles of material. This is what a super eruption is. While the lava flows may be contained within a relatively small radius in the park, the damage will come from volcanic ash. When ejected miles into the air, the ash, which is a mixture of splintered rock and glass, will be dispersed across the country, with only about one-third of the material reaching the atmosphere. Scientists have used historical ash deposits and advanced modeling to predict that an eruption would produce an umbrella cloud that would spread in all directions. Such a super eruption could bury the northern Rockies under three feet of ash, while the Midwest would receive a few inches and both coasts would receive even less. The exact distribution of the ash would depend on the season and weather patterns. Despite the different scenarios, they all pose a great threat as the amount of volcanic ash that would be ejected has the potential to cause widespread devastation. The impact of the ash could be fatal to both humans, animals, and plants, as well as buildings and infrastructure. Even a few inches of ash, which could spread across much of the country, has the ability to destroy farmland, clog roads, cause respiratory issues, and even disrupt power lines. In addition, air travel throughout North America would likely come to a standstill. Moreover, a large volcanic eruption could also have a significant impact on global climate. Volcanic eruptions can release sulfur aerosols into the atmosphere, which reflect sunlight and temporarily cool the climate. While these particles have a short lifespan in the atmosphere, their effect on the climate can be substantial. The planet has experienced several super eruptions throughout history, and not just at Yellowstone. Geologists have identified at least 47 super eruptions, with the most recent ones occurring around 26,000 and 74,000 years ago in New Zealand and Toba, respectively. The latter eruption caused a 6 to 10 year global winter that may have nearly wiped out humanity, although this is not always the case. On average, Earth experiences one super eruption every 100,000 years. If Yellowstone were to erupt, there could be a smaller event with lava flows like those currently seen at Iceland's Barabunga or a larger super eruption that could last for weeks or months and eject at least 240 cubic miles of material. Such an eruption could cause significant damage, primarily from volcanic ash that would be ejected miles into the air and dispersed across the country, potentially burying the northern Rockies in three feet of ash while other regions would receive a few inches of ash. This could result in the destruction of buildings, roadways, and electrical systems, and cause respiratory problems, among other issues. The impact on the global climate would also be significant, with sulfur aerosols from the eruption reflecting sunlight and cooling the planet temporarily. In the past, even minor eruptions have led to crop damage and famines, indicating that a super eruption would have far-reaching consequences. However, there may be some good news. Yellowstone's magma chamber is influenced by two opposing forces, and if less heat enters from below, the chamber could freeze, eventually turning into a solid granite body. Additionally, the volcanic hotspot beneath Yellowstone is moving northeast, and on a long enough time scale, the hotspot will move out from beneath Yellowstone, and the supervolcano will eventually die out. Nonetheless, it's crucial to prepare for the possibility of a Yellowstone eruption and its potential consequences.